Several more witnesses took the stand today in the murder trial of Alec Murdoch. That trial now in its 14th day. Murdoch is accused of shooting and killing his wife Maggie and their youngest son Paul in June of 2021. An FBI agent finished testimony and was followed by Chris Wilson, Murdoch's friend, who says they were best of friends. But according to testimony, as we get a live look right now inside of the courtroom, Murdoch left him on the hook for almost $200,000. Now the person you see sitting right there, that's Mark Tinsley. He's the attorney representing the family of Mallory Beach. She was the young lady killed in the boat crash. Our team coverage continues at the Culloden County Courthouse right now with Raphael James, Blair Sable and Michael Higdon. Raph, we'll start with you. Why did Wilson say he went along with what Murdoch was telling him to do concerning all of that money? Well, and he said he had a history with Murdoch. He had a relationship that spanned decades and he had no thought whatsoever that Alec Murdoch was capable of doing the things financially that he's involved with in this crime. And I can't tell you exactly what he said when he confronted Alec Murdoch, but to paraphrase, it was, I messed you up. I messed a lot of people up and he admitted to a 20 year opioid addiction. The defense has been using any of this financial evidence that points to money crimes. They say they don't want it in there. They've been trying to get it taken out because they say it's not a financial trial, but a murder trial. Now, we haven't heard much from defense attorney Dick Harpootlian until this afternoon while trying to block more key testimony and witnesses from the state. Blair Sable, of course, has been watching as well. And Blair, why is he trying to keep so many of these witnesses in particular off the stand? Well, Roth, the defense is concerned that these witnesses who are testifying about millions of dollars in white collar crimes will unfairly sway the jury against their client. Mark Tinsley, who is testifying right now, uh, they most recently tried to block his testimony. And earlier this afternoon, uh, they tried to block Tony Satterfield's testimony, though. Uh, that is the victim who uh, Murdoch confessed to stealing $4 million in settlement money from Dick Harpootley, a defense attorney for Alec Murdoch. He's taken a bit of a backseat, uh, allowing Jim Griffin and Phil Barber to handle most of the cross-examination. He accused uh, Prosecutor Creighton Waters of gilding the lily earlier this afternoon. And at this point, we've heard days of testimony about Murdoch's alleged financial misdeeds. And this comes after the defense tried to have everything we've heard so far thrown out yesterday. The judge denied the motion to block Satterfield as well as Tinsley because we're hearing from him right now. And earlier today, he blocked the state from bringing up another Murdoch related incident with Chris Wilson, who heard about the roadside shooting. Now to bring you up to speed, that is when prosecutors say Murdoch tried to have himself killed for an insurance payout for his surviving son, Buster, in September 2021. So first is hearsay, but, but more importantly, Your Honor, it is a bridge too far under the under the narrow exception that you've offered, that, that they're offering this evidence of financial crimes. The judge agreed with attorney Jim Griffin in that case, saying that the witness, Chris Wilson, they wanted to question wasn't the right person to do so with. Now, that doesn't mean we won't hear at all about this incident. We've heard from several other staffers who worked with Alec Murdoch um, about testimony in the days leading up to that Labor Day shooting. And Eddie Smith, the accused shooter in that case, he is on the witnessness, uh, witness list, and we could be hearing from him soon. Roth. All right, Blair, thank you very much. And we want to go back to Chris Wilson's testimony for a moment. Again, there was a very lengthy relationship between he and Alec Murdoch. Michael Higdon was in the courtroom. And at times, Michael, uh, Chris Wilson got pretty emotional on the stand. Rob, several tears were shed, and you could tell that he was physically torn up about the testimony he had to give today from the $192,000 he never got back from Alec after covering for him to the night of the murders at Mazelle. Wilson barely looked at Alec the entire time that he was on the stand, except for when he had to identify him. His test uh, eyebrows were scrunched for a majority of his testimony. Wilson and Alec have known each other for decades since law school and had worked multiple cases together, and he considered Alec one of his best friends. Wilson said it didn't stop there, that their wives and kids were also extremely close. Wilson said the night of the murders, he talked to Alec a few times, all only a few minutes, and it seemed like any other night until his wife woke him up with the news. 
my wife was telling me what's going on. I just told her, I said, um, I, I gotta, I'll get some clothes. I got to go to Moselle. We started trying to call our daughter right at about 11 o'clock. Started trying to call our children, tell them what was going on. I don't, I don't even know if my, how much my wife and I spoke about it. I mean, she knew I was leaving. Um, I got in the car, went straight to Moselle, grabbed some clothes and went straight to Moselle. Now, in cross-examination, the defense did a good job of painting Alec as a family man who loved Maggie, Paul, and Buster more than anything. And after the murders happened, Wilson said that several people around Alec thought he was going to harm himself. I mean, he was distraught. He's destroyed and upset all the time and not eating, not sleeping, sometimes not feeling, not seeming like he was just focused in and even there. And the reason he was distraught it was over the death of Maggie and Paul, right? Yeah, yes. I mean, and, and at no point in time, when you're thinking, I'm afraid he might hurt himself, you weren't thinking he had any involvement in June, July, during this period of time with the murders of Maggie and Paul. Yes, sir. Well, toward the end of cross-examination, defense attorney Jim Griffin actually turned to the crowd and asked Buster and his girlfriend to stand up. He asked Wilson if he recognized them, and of course, Wilson said yes. It's still unknown right now as to the reasoning behind that act. Reporting live in Culleton County, I'm Michael Higdon. Roth, back to you. Thank you very much, Michael. And one of the last witnesses to be called to the stand was the CEO of the Palmetto State Bank. The prosecutor uh, showed some documents on the screen about Murdoch's account being overdrawn by more than $300,000. So he asked, what's the overdraft fee for that? The president replied, $5. After the rumble of laughter subsided across the courtroom, he followed up that question with, were you aware of that? To which the president said, no. We're live at the Calvin County Courthouse. I'm Raphael James, back to you. All right, Prof, thank you. Now, we will be in the courtroom throughout the trial, bringing you the latest on air and online with our streaming service. Our live five team coverage of the Murdoch murder trial continues for you at six o'clock this evening.